Hi there, it's Paul Carman. Um, this time with a very short uh, follow-up video, um, and it, this one follows on from our little um, video showing you how to save some of your favourite settings into the keyboard set libraries, um, which we access using these buttons here. Been a couple of bits of confusion, and I hope um, that just during the course of this little video we can we can sort some of these problems out. Remember to access keyboard set library mode, you must make sure that the set list button isn't on. And then you can either, when we're in factory mode, we can either select the categories using the buttons or we can use the uh, tabs down either side of the screen. <clears throat> Each one of those tabs can have up to six pages, six pages with eight locations on each my maths was correct at school, that's 48 locations per category. Now it's when we get to the user that there's been uh, a little bit of confusion here. On my particular uh, PA4X, now I'm going to zoom in just so that you can uh, see what's going on. We'll try and refocus that for you there. <clears throat> You'll see that I've still got some categories labelled down the side. But on this side, I've, I've just got them labelled as user 7, user 8, through to user 11. Now, first thing to point out, you're not stuck with these category labels down here. If you choose, for instance, the first one, which in my case says piano, and we go to the pull down menu, there's an option there just up from the bottom which says rename user banks. And if we press that, we then get the pop-up screen coming up with our familiar uh, text sign and <coughs> excuse me in this page we can now rename all of the categories so for example instead of piano you might put my set one you might put my set two my set three it's whatever works for you so that's the first thing and that's that was the first bit of confusion you can actually rename all the tabs in the user bank now, one of my customers, what he wanted to be able to do was get his favourite keyboard sets to be accessed from the buttons here. <clears throat> well, Pete and I thought about this, and actually it was Pete who came up with the answer. Um, there is a way to do this, and I can understand why the customer would want to do that. Let's, for instance, say that you've renamed these My Set 1, My Set 2, etc. So you're not storing specific categories into each of the, uh, the tabs there. What he wanted was to be able to call up his favorite um, keyboard library sets on the fly. Well, you've actually got 11 locations available. You can't use the end button because that toggles between the, the different categories there. But, <clears throat> What you can do, if in my set one, if we've called it that, make sure that the first keyboard set that you use regularly is stored into that first location. If you go then to your second category, which let's assume you've called it my set two, you store your second most used keyboard set also in that first location. And you do the same for each one of the tabs. Make sure you always store in that first location. Now, if we do that, if I just pan back out on the camera a second, <coughs> excuse me again, what will happen is when I go to one, it calls up first category, position one. When I go to button two, it calls up second category, position one. Third category, position one and so on. So providing you've stored all your favorite settings, your absolute favorites, into location one, then yes, you can happily use the first 11 buttons there to call up your keyboard sets. It's just another way to use the product. I think it's great that people are looking at things in this way because there's, there's no f necessarily a fixed or a right way to do things. It's whatever works for you. But I personally, I can see the benefit of having your favorites and your most used keyboard sets instantly available at the touch of a button.